Welcome to RV to Freedom Live with Carenza and Brandon. Hi. <laughs> We're here to make it easier for you to transition into a nomadic life of full-time RVing. Yes, we have the RV to Freedom Facebook group, which some of you guys may be in. <laughs> We've got RVtofreedom.com, which has got resources. And we have a course called the Roadmap to Full-Time RVing that is designed to help you figure out how to get your life on the road. Yes. I see Brigitte is watching in the sunshine today. So that's awesome. And that's actually kind of what we're talking about today. Sunshine and hot things. Um, so how many of you guys have pets? Because if you have pets, do you worry about what happens to them on hot days or, you know, even you on a hot day? <laughs> <laughs> for us, we've been hanging out in the Midwest the past couple of weeks, well, for a while now, the past few weeks, um, but there's been this heat wave coming through, and it's been hot. Yes. And and not just hot temperature-wise, but humid and, and kind of melting. That's what I think of. When yes, I and it, since we've come melting. from the desert, which, uh, all right, that doesn't sound right. But we came from the desert in the wintertime where it was dry <laughs> and cool at night to the humidity. It's been an adjustment. <laughs> yeah. And um, Urgent <laughs> says she has a senior cat. We've also got two senior dogs. And one yes. in particular, she's she's a lot less heat tolerant than she used to be. Yes. So we very much have to watch her and worry about her needs. And um, today actually is probably the coolest day it's been. It's not even that it's that cool. It was still like up into the 80s or something, but it's only 30% humidity. It was <laughs> That's pleasant. Amazing. Yes. yes. <laughs> but we've been uh, doing this for a while. So we have come up with, we found different solutions through different ways to keep pets cool when we're here and when we're gone, which is really a big concern for us that we want to make sure that they're comfortable while we're gone and, and no one is you know, going to have a heat stroke or anything. Right. So, Hey Sandy, Kevin says this is a good topic because that's one of his worries. So great. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Hi Alan and tires and tails is here. That's a Facebook group that's dedicated just to pet stuff yes. for, for RVers and they are RVers. RVers, so they're awesome. full time RVers. Yes, three Shih Tzus, not very. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. They, all the little dogs and everything are one is just whining at us right now. We might have to make yeah. her be a model here in a minute. So, <laughs> um, the first thing to do to keep your pets cool is run the air conditioners. But you would think, well, if I'm in a full hookup parks, then I'm going to have air conditioners and then I've got no issues. And 99% of the time that's true. But when everybody gets into the full hookup park on mm -hmm. the hottest days of summer and everybody runs air conditioners all at once, the power can go out in the park. And if you're out playing, you may not know. We just had yes. this happen. We yeah. just had this happen over Memorial Day weekend because guess what? This park doesn't usually use this one section that a whole bunch of us were in. And it it killed about six sites. It didn't for actually about three, for about three hours. Yes. Yeah. But it was in the 90s already and very humid and everything. So the temperatures rose very quickly yeah. and it just wasn't feasible to sit inside the RV. We had to sit inside outside <laughs> in the shade with the dogs and keep them cool because we there was no way we could have left and left the dogs in the yeah. RV. Because if you think about it, I mean, an RV, it's it's just like a bigger car. And there's a little more Yeah, I mean, it's a little bit slower to change temperatures, but right. it will change temperatures like a car will. And it can get right. up into the 90s or over 100 degrees inside. It's not as well insulated as a house or as big as a house to have, you know, airflow going yeah. all around. And there's no attic above you to catch all the heat. It just kind of starts heating up and if you're inside the rv without air conditioning you'll you'll understand that and um we were going to talk about the low tech stuff first but we probably should talk about the high tech because it wraps right into the power going out okay so we're going to start at the highest level of of what we do and then we'll get into simpler things you can do you have to take care of that plant sandy make sure yeah. it doesn't uh, get too hot too cold yeah, exactly <laughs> And, you know, probably some of this goes for kids, too, but you probably aren't leaving your kids leaving, alone. Yeah, but some kids. of this stuff can um, help you keep tabs on your RV. 
So the first um, high tech solution is some sort of temperature monitor in your RV that will let you know the temperature when you're gone. You can actually do this in a low tech, <laughs> low high tech, low high tech type of way where you just get a thermometer and, you and can, an old cell phone, right? And an old cell phone, some kind of smartphone. And you can put an app on there. There's an app called Presence, which turns your cell phone into a camera. Yes. And you can just um, set that up. You need Wi Fi. So you have to have Wi Fi in your RV and running all the time. But that Presence app can connect to the internet through the Wi Fi. And then you've just turned it into a, a webcam. Or, yeah. And then you can actually get on the internet while you get onto the app. Yeah, you'll use you your other phone, app. your active phone, and you'll get mm -hmm. on the app and you'll check in and you can see what's going on in your RV. So then what people do that's kind of cool is they'll, they'll have this pointed in the bedroom or wherever the dogs are, and then they'll put a thermometer like right here, right in view of the camera. And so when they look at the screen, they can see the thermometer in the camera and they can see what maybe the they can is. see. Yeah, you see, you see the thermometer and everything, and maybe if it's pointed right, you could see your pets. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Lisa, how's yeah, it going? I'm safe. And Lisa's Rusty. here, and Jane yeah. and Rusty. And then another trick cool. that people will do to go even mm. further low high tech is um, tie streamers to the air conditioner vent. Mm. So in the video, you can see the streamers moving, so you know your air conditioner is running. So that's another trick. So that is. Um, sort of a cheap solution if you've already got Wi-Fi in your RV. Mm -hmm. So if you've already got a mobile hotspot or the campground has good enough Wi-Fi, but it usually won't. So you'll usually need your own mobile hotspot. And then we've all got an old cell phone banging around somewhere, or we can pick one up real cheap. And um, it's an interesting solution to do. You can also right. use it as a security camera in right. your RV while you're not gone. Um, it can do motion detection and other things. So it's pretty cool. Um, so that's the low high tech solution. <laughs> and then the high high tech solution, well, I'm sure there's better than what we have, is um, a device that doesn't need a separate Wi-Fi connection. So what we mm -hmm. use is a nimble wireless device. And this comes from, it's got dog hair stuck on it. Imagine that. This comes <laughs> from a company called rvpetsafety.com. And um, this has its own Verizon SIM card in it. And it has a little mount here. So you mount this on the wall, you mount this in it, and then you plug it in and you leave it plugged in all the time. And what this will do is it takes the temperature and it sends it to their server and then they send it to you on an app. And Krenza can show you what the app looks like. Uh, we've been really happy with this because it's really just dead simple. So see if that's, oh, it's so bright. Yeah. Here, hold it out of the light. So the. Claire, that's not helping, is it? Right. <laughs> no. Yeah, let me turn down the light. <laughs> Basically, you can log in on there, this app. All you out. have to do is, that's, that's just well, you bad. can kind of see it there. You can see a big temperature on the screen. Sorry, guys. Oh, oh, it's starting to go. There it is. There it, there is. it is. So you can see um, the temperature. It tells you the um, the battery power of this device. It the tells signal you strength. The signal strength. And then you can set your minimum and your max, and that's like on here on the bottom. Uh, you can set your minimum temperature and your max temperature, and it will give you an alert if it hits either of those yeah, extremes. Yeah, if it's too hot or too cold. Mm -hmm. um, what's cool about this device compared to some of the others is this talks to their server, and then their server talks to your phone. <laughs> so if this should ever lose connection with their server, say the cell phone tower goes down wherever your RV is parked, you'll still get an alert that says, I've lost connection. I can't give you any information. So at least you get something. Some of the other devices that communicate directly to you, if you lost cell phone connection, you'd never know. So, so Rusty, the name of the website, it's the rvpetsafety.com. So the up on the screen, you should see RV Pet Safety. If you guys aren't seeing that, let us know. We've had problems before where we think we're typing in stuff you can see and it doesn't work. But it should say RV Pet Safety and just hit dot com afterwards. Yeah. And Jim, um, the sender, it, uh, uh, let me, uh, I'll get Jim's question first. The sender, you do <laughs> want to leave plugged in because it, it does have a battery in it, but the battery is only for you know, six hours or so. It's not a long-term battery, but the charging port is just a small, it's just a USB port. So you can plug this into a cigarette lighter connection, a 12 volt connection, or you can use an AC adapter. Um, and then if the power goes out in your RV, it will stay on and continue running and it'll send you an alert that says the power went out. If you look at my phone, if you, 
I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, we've already had problems with the phone. You can't see it. But on my phone, it's actually told me on battery. Um, right. It let us right? know that. Well, it, it's, it's, it let us know. It sent an alert to. Yeah, it says on battery device. alert. So it's alerted me that it's unplugged and it's on battery now. Yeah. So, so you do get the alerts for if whatever temperature you set as high or low. And so when I said, you know, at the extremes, it's just the extremes that we've chosen. We've chosen it to to know that our air conditioner probably isn't working if it's gone up that to to that warmth or if we're out boondocking somewhere and we don't want it to get any warmer than that. We set it to a low enough temperature where we know the dogs are okay and that we can get home in time to yeah. counteract that, but high enough where it's it's not gonna alert us every time it hits yeah. 72 <laughs> degrees. Yeah. Um, um, and then we get alerts if it goes on to battery and it's not being charged mm -hmm. with the wall outlet. You'll also get an alert if it loses connection with the cell tower. So mm -hmm. if, if the servers don't receive connections from this every once in a while, it's gonna send you an alert. Um, and this comes with its own data plan. Yeah. So it's not an issue as far as like how much data it's using. Yeah, there is a monthly fee to use this thing. Mm -hmm. And it's um, it comes out to about $10 a month. It's 100 If you do a yearly plan. Otherwise, yeah. I think it's $15 a month, month to month. So if you're only traveling for a few months. A or you're year, only really worried about it in the summertime. In the summer, yeah. Um, then, yeah, you can turn it on and off. But it's 120 for the year, which comes out to $10 a month. You do have to buy the device yeah. for like $200. Yeah. So it's a little expensive yeah. to get started, but once you have it, you have it. And it's got its own Verizon card in it. It uses the Verizon network. Uh, Rusty asked about costs. I think you just answered them. But it's about yeah. 200 for the device and about 120 a year for service. And it's on the Verizon network. Yes. It is on the Verizon network. There is uh, another option if you want a TNT animal. That is a T yes, it is animal alarm. It's a little different. We actually kind of tend to like this one a little better. Yeah. Um, but animal alarm does work on the AT and T network. And there's another option out there too, which I just forgot the name of. There are a few things. This is the one we use and like, and we wanted to show you that too. Yeah. So you can go to rvpetsafety.com to get this guy. Animal Alarm is kind of cool, but Animal Alarm texts you directly. So mm -hmm. it sends a text from an Android type device that it comes with directly to you. If you lose connection between there, um, you'd never know. Um, the other thing that's cool about this guy is you can turn on and off the alerts remotely. So if you leave the house and you forgot to turn on the alerts, you right. just go into the app, you say alerts on, and it's. I like, I mean, otherwise you could and, text the other one and get, yes, thank you, yeah. <laughs> Eric or Jeannie. I don't know. Yeah. Marcel is the other one I was trying to think of. It's a similar setup to these, yeah. but um, yeah, we, this one's kind of made for dogs and everything. And we like that simplicity mm. and we like being able to go on the app and adjust it. And yeah. it is totally worth it yeah. for the safety of your pets. Because like if we had, if we did not happen to be, in the campground and know that the power went up I and mean, power went out uh, over Memorial day weekend, it would, it would get very hot in there very quickly. Yeah. Yeah. And, and even, you know, we boondock a lot so too. Hot. So we don't have air conditioning when we boondock. So if we do need to leave, it's also a nice peace of mind. <laughs> oh, they're both here. Nice. Okay. Eric and Jeannie <laughs> from tires and tails. Yeah. Um, so to take this device to the next level and, just to Lisa, that's where we bought it. Is you can buy it on rvpetsafety.com. Yeah, can you guys see the prompts coming up on screen? Because sometimes they don't work. So yeah. it says rvpetsafety.com on screen right now to us. And if you can see it, then you can see it too. And if not, then we'll stop putting things up there. Um, okay, so then to take this device to the next level, we have a completely separate thing that we had added to our RV, and it's an auto generator start. And on motorhomes, it's simple because because you have a generator, but the auto generator start has a temperature sensor on it. So if we leave and we leave the air conditioner turned on, but there's no power, let's say we're boondocking, there's no power, um, and we turn on the air conditioner, the air conditioner won't run. But if the auto generator start sees the temperature come up too high, it'll turn on the generator. Then once the air conditioner sees that it's got power, it'll start running. And then once the auto generator start sees the temperature has come down to the range you've set, it'll turn off the generator and cut the air conditioning. And so it's a great 
safety device that we use when we're out boondocking. But again, if you're in a campground um, yeah. and, and the power goes out and it starts to rise, the generator can come on automatically and start running. So how we use these together is we've got our <laughs> alerts set for like 84 degrees and we've got our auto gen start set for like 90. So if the power goes out, we'll get, we'll start getting alerts that the power, that the temperature is going up. Then the, if the generator comes on and the air conditioner comes on like it's supposed to, we should start to see the temperature go down. And then we know everything's working, no big rush to rush home, but we would still work our way back home. We wouldn't just let them sit there. Now the downside to the generator is you may want to leave windows open for your dog and leave internal fans on to keep airflow going. But if the generator comes on, it can pull the exhaust from the generator inside the RV. So. Right. So if you think that that's going to be an issue, if you're boondocking, particularly because you're not really planning on the part going out, yeah. <laughs> the, the power going out there, but boondocking in particular, if you want to leave all those windows open, but you, you think the generator is going to have to come on while you're gone, then you don't really want to have all those no. windows open. So it's kind of a decision factor of, of, what you think is going to happen. But if it's really that hot that we think the generator is going to have to come on, we don't leave the dogs. Yeah. Or we'll or take the them with us so and we'll take, take them out to mm -hmm. get ice cream or something. Um, this does work best with an onboard generator, but you can get options that work with external generators. It's just, even with the onboard generator, you need to remember to turn on the auto generator start. You need to remember to turn on the air conditioner. Because if you don't have the air conditioner switched on and the generator comes on, it'll come on and it'll run, but there won't be any any um, AC to come on. Um, we have the Magnum auto generator start that's built into our Magnum inverter system, and you can connect that to an external generator. It's just an extra thing you'll have to plug in when you plug in the generator. And uh, you just have to look around and see what systems are out there. That's okay, Michelle, but thanks for saying something. Sometimes when you look back and you're like, why Why was somebody mad about that? Somebody's mad we had a generator. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, nice but yeah, that. Rusty, you can you can get them to work with external generators. It's just a little trickier. It's an extra <laughs> thing. So that's the super duper high tech way. And I'm sure there's some people out there that have even programmed things to go even more high tech. But this with an auto generator start is is a pretty awesome solution because We've used it before in our friend's driveway when we went to uh, we went to visit a museum and it was hot. We set the auto gen start and then we just stayed on the app. We watched the app and we could see the temperature kind of creep up and then you could see it coming back down. So, you know, the air conditioner was on and then it would turn off and then it would go again. You can also leave your generator on and leave your AC on. You don't have to have an auto gen start. It's just saves you fuel and annoyance to the neighbors. <laughs> kitties yeah, oh and um if you go over to the too. tires and tails blog um they wrote about other options so this is the ones we like and we mentioned a couple others but they have a little more in-depth detail yeah some more that require wi-fi because yeah. you can do webcams and like the presence app and all of that stuff too so yeah. they probably have some more so let's go a little more low tech yeah. uh some of the stuff actually is handy too just if it's a hot day even if you're just hanging out in the rv or at the campsite, um, but it's so it's good for while you're there and when you're not. And uh, let's bridge the gap here: low tech, high tech, fans. You yeah. mentioned fans before, so electric, why not? So they're sort of high tech, right? Right, exactly. So it's bridging that. So we have one of these guys. It's um, an endless breeze, and it's made by Fantastic Fan People, the ones that do the fans. It's basically the ceiling fan. And then they mounted it in a box so you can put it on a stand and it's 12 volt. So you can mount a cigarette lighter somewhere and plug or it in with that. you have a cigarette lighter somewhere. Yeah. yeah. But it's not hard to yeah. add one into your wiring because this is very low draw. Let's look at the sticker on the bottom, which is how you figure out how things are powered. And at, um, let's see, 12 volts, it pulls 4 amps. So at 120 volts, which you guys are used to thinking about, that's 0.4 amps. That's nothing. Mm -hmm. um, it's a little bit more than the gas fridge. Uh, but yeah, this isn't going to hurt much to plug it into your wiring. Right. It's not going to take a lot of your battery while you're away. So plug in a fan. Keep those kitties and puppies cool. And then 
You can also just use a little regular fan. This plugs right into a normal 120 socket. So if you have an inverter that's wired or you have a somewhere that your inverter's wired and you can plug in. So for us, we actually have wired our whole house on the inverter so that we can plug this into mm -hmm. any of our well outlets and we can use it. And you might think it draws a little more, but it doesn't. Let's see. Point. 26 amps. So this actually draws less than this. <laughs> so this is on a cigarette lighter. And so you would think, well, this is less power, but this guy is a 120 yeah. and it's got to go through your inverter. So your inverter will be on. Um, so once your inverter is on, then yeah, they're going to be about the same, but it's not bad. And mm -hmm. we use this fan all the time because it oscillates and it's right. smaller fits on the counter better. And then we'll take this one and use it outside, use it in the car or um, use it if we need extra power. But having that, that fan, having the air actually feels cooler and helps sometimes better than just even the AC, especially yeah. for a, well, in particular, our dog who has heart problems right now and she just gets a little too hot and actually having that cooling air feels better for yeah. her. And um, Sandy asks, when does our solar come into play? Our solar system and most of your solar systems will never be big enough to run your air conditioner. Yeah. So it helps run this. It helps run this. <laughs> and that's um, why we have our, our inverter. It's keeping our batteries charged and we leave our inverter on so we can run this. <laughs> yeah. But even still, if nothing else is in your on in your RV and you just got a fan on, your batteries will probably be good for yeah. most of the day. Right. Hey, Liz. Yeah. So, yeah, because you're not going to be gone the whole day where you're running a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, if it's that right. hot, you should you not be leaving your dogs be. like that. Yeah. And add onto the fan, and you can actually buy little separate things all contained in one unit for this. Have you guys ever made a swamp cooler? Yeah. Um, so you can combine this with, with your own fan and they do sell uh, like mini swamp coolers and stuff now and different, um, what are they called? condensation units something no, I don't like know. that fancy names i was looking it's up. a swamp cooler basically but, yeah so you take your fan or the other one fan would probably be good because yeah. it's nice and big and wide and you blow it over ice yeah <laughs> that's a swamp cooler um <laughs> or so, icy water or something yeah so you get you know a bucket of ice or you can do like a coil thing you can do a bunch of different things there's some that you can make out of like styrofoam coolers where you blow air down into the cooler and then you have an exhaust vent that comes out and basically you're just blowing air over ice. It's a terribly inefficient way to cool because you're going to go through a lot of ice. Right. But for right. one day, it's fine. Yeah. And it's, it makes that, that air a lot cooler. Yeah. It feels good. You know, if you need that. And, you know, I saw Kevin said he has this, this fan too on his desk and it does blow. It's pretty good. We use it at night too. Yeah. And, yeah, it, it actually had that fan has forever, a lot of and it air hasn't on it. died on us. And yeah, it's nice. So Lisa Brown said they just blocked blogged about keeping cool in their coach last week too. So that's the always on Liberty blog. Mm -hmm. So everybody's talking about it because everybody's hot right now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, the thing about swamp coolers is they work best in a drier climate. Um, as it gets more and more humid, it's harder and harder to make it feel cool. But they are called swamp coolers because people use With them in the swamps. Swamp. Yeah. So <laughs> they do work. Hey, Susan, we talked about high tech earlier, so that's what you're going to be watching. Right now we're talking about low tech, so if you watch the replay, it's kind yep. of what we're going over. And Michelle, uh, I'm sorry, Michael just jumped in. <laughs> they use a product called RV Pet Safety. I think you missed the first few minutes because we use that too. <laughs> um, yeah, we like this one a lot. So then along with um, cooling by evaporative processes, yeah, <laughs> processes, we have a couple different collars that we've or collar type things that we've used on our dogs. So like we have this one that canine chill and it's just one of those cooling fabrics. Like you can get this stuff for you too, to have like a bandana around your neck or something like that. And Oops. it's that same spelled that but wrong. Okay. <laughs> same kind of process where you just put this in cold water and let it get saturated. You can bring it out a little bit and slip this on their neck. This one even has a little place for their collar. Yeah, a little for place the, for the their, collar to go through. Yeah. And um, it just helps keep them a little cooler. 
uh, when you're walking them outside when it's warm, then the air is kind of going through it and helping them keep cool. Yeah. Like These, this kind of thing is not something you would leave your dog in and then leave your RV for and hours. And think that it's going to keep no, cool No, you need hours. some sort of airflow and they're really going to dry out in about an hour or so. So they're not like going to last forever. This is another one. Did we get this at a craft fair or something? We got it at a, at basically. We got, I think we got it at the farmer's market. Yeah. So this actually has little gel beads inside it and you soak it in water and the beads swell up and hold that water. And then... You know, it's as like a, those the fake snow stuff, something like that. Yeah. And as you're walking around or the dogs are walking around or whoever's walking around, um, you know, the air blows through it and it cools and it releases the water a lot more slowly than this other one. So it, it lasts a little bit longer. And once you soak this in water, it gets, you know, pretty big around. Um, it's another option. And then um, there's also like these cooling gel collars, which we got this as a freebie. We haven't used this yet, but. You can refrigerate this or even put it in the freezer and it doesn't quite freeze, but it gets really cold. And again, it gives you a few hours of, of cooling. Yeah. And along with that cooling gel collar, they make these cooling gel mats. So you can actually put this, if you have the room, um, you can put it in your freezer or your fridge at least to chill it a little bit mm -hmm. and then put it wherever the dog might, you know, lay down or, um, in their crate, if you yeah. have a crate. No, our dogs are not smart enough to know to lay on this thing, no. even though it's right next to them. They'll be panting sitting right next to it. But yeah, it's a big mat. And we have a regular um, gas fridge and we can fit it in ours. Um, got it on Amazon, it was pretty inexpensive, but it's full of gel. <laughs> yeah. So again, these things that are meant to stay cool and for then someone. I was gonna say, and Eric and Jeannie mentioned too, the cooling vest for dogs. And there's yeah. things like this for a whole cooling vest or ones where you can douse them in water like these. Oh, this is wet. I did. Um, <laughs> you can douse them in water and it's evaporative cooling and that's what swamp yeah. coolers are. I couldn't think of that word for some reason. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so you can have the whole vest to help keep them cool. Yeah. So these you do refrigerate. So they do um, come pre-chilled and then they last for a few hours before they warm back yeah, up. Sometimes These not things even that long. are evaporative, so they need an airflow to keep them cool. None of this is going to last very long, but it does help. Right. And it's nice when you're, I mean, yeah, when you're walking around and if you're walking outside, it helps keep them cool. Yeah. That's great. And Sandy mentioned, and, and we've mentioned it before, but Solar power can't run most air conditioners in an RV. So if you're thinking, well, I'll just throw on solar and then run the AC all day, it's not really going to happen. So you need to think of other things. Unless you've got a huge budget, then you can you can do it. But it's, you know, it's rare and um, not practical for most people. Right. <laughs> and and then one last little low tech thing, if you're want to help keep your dogs cool when you're sitting outside together or even if you leave them for a little bit if you have a kong you can fill it with yogurt and just other things peanut that butter will, yeah peanut butter i don't think freezes mm -hmm. as well but if you fill it with stuff that will freeze you can put fill it with different things put it in the freezer and you've basically made like little doggy chilled treats yeah. <laughs> and it and just having that kind of little that cooler substance um, helps keep them cooler too. Yeah. You know? And then just some real basic, we should all know this, but sometimes we even forget, leave water mm. with them. Um, yes. You know, we keep our dogs in the bedroom and their water is just outside the bedroom. And sometimes we forget to put the bowl in there with them, but leave them water in case something does happen. The water, they need water to cool. When they pant, they dehydrate. Um, they need that. And if you're out walking your dogs around and they're getting really hot, we will pour water on the mm -hmm. dogs and rub it in their fur really good. And then their fur acts like an evaporative cooler. Right. It keeps them nice and cold. Right. Um, and then uh, I, I was just going to say with the leaving them water, I know our dogs, they don't always tend to drink when we're gone. It's like they think we're never going to come back and let them out. But I have noticed over the past few weeks that we'll leave a bowl of water with them in there and it's it's gone or almost gone by the time we get back. So they are drinking in the heat yeah. and they will. So make sure to leave water with them. Yeah. And that's a good idea from tires and tails. Um, get their food wet in water and then put that in the Kong and freeze it. So it's like a little uh -huh. 
little food sickle. Yeah. <laughs> oh, your dog loves the ice cubes. I had a dog that did. These two will not eat them. I, I'm like, just eat the ice cube. It will be nice. Yeah. And Lisa's wow. got another great point. These fans are good for dogs, but they're also good for you. Mosquitoes mm -hmm. can't fly into the wind. So if you put the fan out there while you're sitting around or even get a bigger box fan, if there's mosquitoes, yes. you keep the fan blowing on you, you get a nice cool breeze and the mosquitoes can't get to you. Yeah, so. when we had we had bigger base base, we did have a bigger box fan yeah. that was nice for that. Yeah. <laughs> Liz, Liz just finished driving a long way and your pup was getting hot. So I hope some of these tips help and for yeah. the next driving day too. And for those of you that have motor homes, you can run the generator, your onboard generator in your motorhome and run your roof air conditioner while you drive. Mm -hmm. So on really hot days, or if we know we're going to pull in somewhere and go get lunch, we'll turn on the generator while we're driving and then turn on the air conditioner and get keep the back of the RV cool because Kona sits back here on the couch while we drive. And um, Lucy's got to sit in Chris's lap <laughs> constantly. But um, but yeah, the, you can run your onboard generator and run your roof air conditioner to help keep the RV cool. And then when you get where you're going, you can just leave and the generator's already running and working. Yeah, yeah, it, it helps keep the whole RV a little cooler and not as hot when we get somewhere, too, yeah. if it's really hot out. Just keep in mind, if you're running generators, that if you've got inside exhaust fans on and windows open, it can suck the exhaust from the generator inside, and that's not good for the pets. Right. <laughs> anyone. Yes. That's not good for anyone. Yeah. And occasionally we do that, and our sensors start going off, and our um, carbon monoxide detectors start going off, so we... We wake up from our nice sleepy nap and go turn it off. <laughs> Just kidding. No. Yeah. All right, guys. Is any other things that you guys do that you want to share? Love to hear it. Yeah. Everybody has had some great suggestions and keeping cool for you and your pet is a big deal. And I know when we leave them, we just, you know, you get a little worried. You, you hate to come back and find them hot and panting or Cats and dogs will pant. You don't see cats pant very much. They tend to toler heat, tolerate the heat better. But once but they a cat's can, panting, that's you know bad. it's bad. Yeah. Yes. So keeping them cool is imperative. Yeah. If you ever do come home and you find a dog that's hot, the most important thing is to get their head cold. Um, get a rag with water, mm -hmm. wrap it around their head and neck. Um, our dog, Kona, has seizures. Well, he has epilepsy. His medicine controls him. But seizures cause heat build up in the body and it's bad for the brain so keep their heads cool that's the whole the whole game there so the brain doesn't yeah. get too hot yeah and uh yeah you can put ice cubes in the water keeps the water cold and it you it gonna pop up cool i know how it's to make him pop up face. no because then he's just gonna get crazy <laughs> yeah kitty pool too that yeah yeah not so much for boondogging but hey you know if you can get extra water it can be Nice. We were just at uh, that. You can Escap use it for boondocking if you stand out there and bathe in it, too. That's true. <laughs> um, we were just at the Escapade. That's the Escapees National Rally. And they had a an area set up as the um, dog run, mm -hmm. as like the dog park. And they actually had two kiddie pools in there for all the dogs to go hang out in, which was nice since it was in the 90s with the heat wave. <laughs> I'm sure many dogs enjoyed it. So I guess that's um, that's most of it. Uh, we really wanted to show you this thing because this is cool. and People ask about this stuff a lot. So the nimble thing from RV Pet Safety or the Anim Alarm or the Marcel, there are things out there to help you. And then some of these other low-tech things, keep them cool. Yeah. Um, make sure you keep the carbon monoxide away if you let the generator run. Um, and, yes, dogs sweat from their feet so wet their feet and it helps them keep them cool along with their heads so so that's another cool tip um so yeah it's getting hot try to keep cool yeah and seek out higher elevations right. that's that's right was, where we need to be right so now I not in missouri something yeah, yeah. <laughs> where you know we try to follow the weather as our viewers most of us do right we're trying to follow 72 degrees and um not av and avoid rain and storms but you can't always do that and yes. we're here. It got hot. We had somewhere to be. It happens. So you just have to deal with it and figure out the best ways to make it work. You know, one more thing. Now, um, talking about dogs' feet, um, the campground we're in right now is all asphalt. Asphalt gets extremely yes, hot. Yeah. So be careful of your dogs walking around barefoot on the asphalt. Uh, we'll get up 
you know, if it's really hot, I wear flip flops all the time. I'll take my shoe off and mm -hmm. put my foot on the ground. And if it hurts me, it, you know, it hurts them. So, you know, keep that in mind, carry them over the asphalt, keep them walking in the grass, try to seek out lighter yeah. environments. There are little boots that you can get for them too, but yeah. you know, if it's just a small piece of asphalt and you can carry them around or avoid it by going around it, do yeah. it because they, it can get very hot. Yeah. And you guys should all know, but do not leave your dogs in the car ever. You know, the RV is one thing they're bigger they're a little slower to change temperatures but cars well, and you can plug it in for ac and, you can and plug things them like in that with ac and you can use um different devices but cars change temperatures way too fast you know take your dogs with you don't you know hang outside and get some ice cream if you go to um freddy's if there's a freddy's custard stand they give you little pup cups yeah. for free so it's a little like one ounce of ice cream with a dog bone stuck in it yeah yeah <laughs> yeah Shake Shack has uh, some, some bigger ones that they give them with a uh, peanut butter in the bottom. Yeah. And the bone. So a lot of the ice cream places will do something for the dogs. We'll even get a, like a kitty cup yeah. and ask them to split it. Now don't give your dogs ice cream all the time or they're going to be way overweight and that's bad for them too. But <laughs> our dogs are old and they had a good life. So we're like, you know what? You guys can have a lot of stuff now. <laughs> we were real strict with them for a long time, more strict than we were with ourselves. Um, but they've they're they've been doing good for us. They <laughs> they deserve it now. Yeah, they deserve, <laughs> they deserve, it. deserve it every so often. And we keep them cooped up a lot because we're working so much. <laughs> but we will take them out and we'll try to go if it's really hot. Especially this was one true when we camped in a pop up camper without AC, and if it was really hot, we take them with us and then we go into dog stores and mm -hmm. pet friendly stores so that they could get air conditioning too. Yeah, and yeah. that's another good point is take go out and do things really early before the rv gets too hot but still have a backup plan in place what if you get injured or get in a accident or something you know have some way for people or just have something in place so that if you don't get home when you thought you would you'll be yeah. all right um and for some of I those i just want to know what starbucks does lisa what is what do they give the dogs because we, we never really go there yeah and I don't think coffee. So <laughs> I'm curious. Let me know. Keep going. I just oh, had yeah, to ask it. since it takes 20 seconds. Yeah. Um, I don't remember what I was saying, but yeah, <laughs> just uh, uh, let people know if you don't get home. Yeah. And I was going to say, um, you know, you can put, because we're travelers and we're never around anywhere. You could put a little card in your wallet where you write down the address of where you're staying and say, I have dogs or I have mm -hmm. cats in my RV, please help and stick it in your wallet. If you were to get in an accident or something, you know, they might find that and then can at least go find your RV and, and take care of your pets and stuff too. Yeah. Yes. All right. So I'm going to wait for yeah. Lisa to answer. <laughs> Type faster, Lisa. <laughs> Type faster. Yes. And hiking earlier in the day when it's not so hot in the rig is a good thing. It's a good thing for if you want to leave them and it's a good thing if you want to take the dogs with you. Yeah. And hiking on any surface especially in the sand dunes we had <laughs> exactly. that problem when we forgot everything including leashes one time yeah yeah that was it oh lisa said it's like cold whipped cream oh yeah. okay that's what i was trying to yeah. wonder whipped cream but i wasn't sure cold that's that's interesting now no. we know that so if we no. go through there we'll have to get a cold whipped cream little puppy treat yeah and i'm eric sure that would like the cats would like that too eric and genie at tires and tails says you could stash a key and then have an emergency number on your window or wallet. Yeah, we know people that have like emergency numbers they put in their window. You we can do. even put something that says like, if my <laughs> generator is on, call this number. And, you know, or, you know, it, if you need to reach me, call this number. And it's a good idea on your pets to put, make sure your number's on them too, mm -hmm. because the address doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter <laughs> you if you're a full timer. I mean, it's, um, it's, you want to get that, uh, that information to somebody right away. Yeah. You know? And, you know, even on our cats, we had a, a little thing we put on their collar that says indoor cat, I'm lost, and then had our phone number just so people know if they found them. But now we're getting into all the pet stuff. And there's a ton of pet stuff. Out yeah, there's there's about. Of, yeah, I was yeah. Say, <laughs> all about that. yeah. So anyway, yeah, we do have, the, yes, the stickers that you can put on there. So that I mean, that it that is part of, well, keeping your pets cool. If if for some reason that there is an outage or something, mm -hmm. if somebody can call you and tell you. Yeah. So make sure to put that information on your door or window or somewhere. Yeah. But on those serious hot days when it's 
like really too hot, take them with you, stay home in the hottest parts of the day. Um, you know, so you don't have to run that risk because even in an RV park with 50 amp hookup, the power goes out sometimes. Now I would say in four and a half years, it's only happened to us for an extended period of time twice, mm -hmm. but both times it was a dead middle of the summer. It's always mm -hmm. the worst time because that's when everybody's using the power. Right. Yeah. Right. All right, guys. Well, I think that's all we're going to say. So for stay today. cool. Keep your pets cool. And stay in school. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And, but it's summer. You got to stay cool and keep your pets cool. So we'll see you next week. Yeah. So goodbye from RV to freedom. And um, may all your on ramps be downhill. <laughs> That's something I think is funny. So we'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye. We hope you enjoyed this replay of our Facebook live show. Join our Facebook community to participate in the live shows and learn how to live in an RV. Go to rvtofreedomgroup.com to join the RV to Freedom Facebook group. And to be notified about our next live videos and more, sign up with the link provided below in the video description. We want to help you find your RV to Freedom.